Yo, what up? We. It's your boy Grade A. Fun. <laughs> Yo, it's 2019. It's been a long time since I made a video. I was looking through my old videos and I saw a lot of people were interested in cleaning up, particularly in harmony. So I decided, hey, let me do some uh, clean up video. And right now, what you're seeing is some video reference from this animation that I was putting together. Sometimes, if you're an animator, you got to be comfortable with the idea of looking like a fool. Uh, it's the model sheet for the character I'm going to do clean up for. Uh, so, these are just some steps and process. Any of it that you're interested. So, what I'm going through now here is I'm just making a, a layer so I can do all the finished cleanup work. And I'm going to get rid of some of the earlier, sketchier stuff that I did that was kind of messy that you probably don't really care about or want to see. And I'm just going to double check, make sure my brush is set with the proper taper and that it has a uh, smoothing on there so that I can make a lot cleaner, nicer line. So uh, I know some people don't really like the smoothing in uh, Harmony or any of the vector software, but I love it. Because um, there's times where you start drawing fast and things can get really sloppy or messy. So if you turn on the smoothing, it'll help. This is all sped up, so I'm drawing way slower than this, like super slow. And it's mostly because if you draw super fast, I mean, you can easily just make a mess. And so a lot of the lines, as much as possible, trying to draw from the shoulder, make nice clean strokes. Uh, primarily so you don't end up with a lot of choppy lines that are disconnected. So when it's time to do the color work, that you have a lot of uh, broken lines and then you have to spend way more time going back in and patching things together which uh, for this I don't really want to do a lot of patching together uh, and you can see quite frequently that I'll draw through things so I never really um, like stop and try to precisely hit the end of something uh, one thing I think is really important about trying to do much cleaner line work is that you have to be comfortable with the idea that the tie down or even the you know, sort of cleaned up version of the animation uh, may not be at its you know, most proper proportion or still may not have all of the necessary position of things or may not be as finessed as it needs to be. So you know, hopefully you can still go in there, reference your model sheet and try to get it uh, as close as possible based off of yeah. Uh, the drawings that you've been given or the drawings that you've done mm -hmm. and that you feel relatively comfortable with the direction that you're going but that you're still trying to be informed by you know it, I'm not just copying the lines precisely but I'm still trying to you know, keep some of the vitality of things um, and still to a certain degree find areas where you might want to refine it um, because even if it is been uh, redrawn and put on model that sometimes uh, things are not necessarily as accurate or uh, as proportional as they could be so um, I love the cutter tool in harmony um, and in this case I just copied and pasted the pupil so I didn't have to draw it again uh, which was kind of sort of laziness uh, but this cutter tool boy when you draw past the lines you can go into harmony and you can go to your cutter tool and what it will do is it'll cut where the overlapping lines are so it makes your line work like super clean because uh, I know for me when I was trying to draw just in other software that didn't have that tool you know trying to make those 90 degree clean lines was really hard uh, it would be a lot of erasing and drawing back in erasing and drawing back in but in this case you just draw straight through the line come back with your cutter tool and cut 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 uh, so right there I'm just saving it because saving is important because if you forget disaster. disaster so in this step I just convert the line works to strokes Ooh. so on the color layer yeah, and then again if you've closed your closed your lines really well and in this case I've already made the palette for this because um, I've got some ideas of other areas I want to take this into for a project but um, I was doing an animation demo in class and thought hey I should kind of share this idea and concept because uh, other people may you know, may not be uh, doing it in this way or haven't thought about doing it this way in terms of coloring and doing some shading and the process may be a little bit more difficult and cumbersome so 
if your process feels a bit cumbersome this is a, a sort of approach you can use um, but making the palette systems in harmony is oof, it's a time saver uh, I did a short uh, when I was in school and I had to change some colors and it was awesome like once you change it in one palette because that palette is shared across all of your files it's going to change it in every file that's using that palette so I find that's the most ingenious thing ever so on to some lighting concepts like you need to understand the basics of where your light source is coming from in order to do any of the sort of fake uh, shading stuff that I'm uh, talking about here so in general the way this works is that there's just a light source and then wherever your core shadow is that's basically what's going to define your shadow side so you kind of have you should at least have a guesstimation of what, it, what that's like so that you can effectively say both my cast shadow and my form shadow become one thing and that there is no distinction or separation between the two um, otherwise if this I mean potentially I'm, I'm gonna go back in and animate this <gasps> Did it be messy that's craziness um, but potentially I do want to go back and, and complete the entirety of this animation and eventually post it up uh, and all it is is just a loop of a, like a jump rope uh, kind of idea or jumping idea um, and you know the, I, the, the concept on doing the, the, um, the shadowing stuff is that you shouldn't have to be super precise uh, especially when it comes to the the, the end of the, the side where the shadow is because if you end up being super precise with where it's kind of falling off that it could be very time consuming meticulous but if you can draw past the lines and I have to worry about like oh my goodness am I being super clean with those edges and being really meticulous uh, in this case you could just scribble all the way past it if it's a little messy on the outside you're fine the only part you have to be clean with is the, is the inside because you can't I mean you could but it would take more time to to cut the details for that so you might as well do the inside clean but then the outside edge you could just make it kind of mushy and messy because what you can do is you can use a cutter tool in harmony to cut out so you can use the shape um, of your uh, color layer so all of your animated color layer and stuff you can use the shape of that in its entirety to cut out the outside edges um, of your shadow and that's basically what I do here. So I scribble along the outside and get my shadow close to where I need it. And I go into the, the node library and I drop in a few nodes. So I drop in a blending one. Uh, so the blending one is it's sort of like Photoshop where you can do multiply, overlay, color, add, and all that sort of stuff. And I just play it a couple options to see what I like. So I kind of stuck with multiply just because I like the way it looks. Uh, it keeps some of the color that I want. Uh, the overlay was cool, but it felt like it just kind of blended real fast. Uh, so I connect all those nodes together. I'll add in a blur too, a radial blur, because I want to soften this a little bit uh, so it's not such a harsh edge. And then I'll just go in here and play with the options. So I'll play with the blur a little bit to add a sort of a little softer shadow. Part of what's great about this though is that you know once you do, once you connect all these nodes, it's going to affect the entirety of that layer. So you don't have to worry about doing every single layer meticulously. Like you don't have to blur every single layer, which a lot of times people don't tend to use the uh, composite nodes in Harmony, uh, the compositing sort of stuff in Harmony, where you can just come in and, and connect nodes to get the desired effect that you want. So uh, that's kind of what this is about. It's, you know, you can slow it down, click through it to see the bits that you need in the event that you know maybe a zoom by faster than you necessarily want it. And if you have questions, you can always hit me in the comments and say, hey. You did this stuff, it went really fast. Do you think you can show me specifically how to do it? And I'll even make another video that breaks that down uh, so that you can get every single tiny particular detail. So, you know, the node view is not scary. I know for some hand drawn animators, they think nodes, and then they say no. But really, it's, it's very simple, it's very easy to use. Once you get the once you get the knack for it, it's I mean you could do a lot of powerful things and you could solve a lot of the things that you would try to solve in some other software. You could do it directly inside of Harmony. So you know, use all the tools and use them to your advantage. Thank y'all for watching. I really appreciate it. Look for some more upcoming videos this year with your boy Grade A Fun. I'm out. Hey.